needed every day It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change I don't want to abuse your grace God, I need it every day It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change
and, and again, a lot of those endorsements, and one of those was for Nike. Nike shoes, Nike everything, if you remember back then. And, uh, and one of the, the little sayings, I guess, as the, in the commercials was, I want to be like Mike. I want to be like Michael Jordan. And, 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 you remember that? So, I want to be like Mike. Right, 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 right. Yes, you remember. So, so Aaron was three or four, and, and one day Rhonda found her, and I'm not going to describe exactly what she looked like, but, but she was trying to be like Mike. And, my, and Rhonda said, what are you doing, dear? And she said, I want to be like Mike. <laughs> and she had adorned herself so that she would look like Michael Jordan. You know, that's a compliment, isn't it? That, that somebody would want to be like me. Uh, as parents, we love that our, our kids grow up and sometimes they may follow in our footsteps as far as their work or, or maybe they follow in our footsteps uh, serving in the church. I mean, there's any number of things they may do uh, that, that brings honor to us. It, it's an honor that, that our, our children grow up and love us and, and want to uh, maybe follow in our steps sometimes. In our scripture this morning, we're studying about the Lord Jesus Christ and what He did for us. Last week, we looked at, at the humiliation of Christ, we called it, where the Bible says that He emptied Himself. And that he literally left all of His divine attributes to the side, and He came and lived as a man. Now, He was still God, but He chose to, to limit Himself so that He could live exactly as we do, except He lived a sinless life. He died on the cross, paying the sins for the, for the world. For you and for me, He gave His life so we don't have to. And, and so through this, this gift of God, man can be saved, what we call sin. So that was what we looked at. That was the humiliation of Christ, how He humbled Himself. Paul writes to the church of Philippi, he tells us to follow the example of Christ. That, that this is what we're to be doing. We're to humble ourselves as well. Now then, I want us to continue though, beginning in, in verse 9. It says, therefore... Anytime it says, therefore, you have to look back and previously, what did he fire per se? So he's told us that here's what Jesus did. He humbled himself, and as a result, therefore, God has done something for Christ. And what, what God has done for Christ is he has exalted him above any other name, above all other names. And, and I want us to consider that this morning. Why should we honor Christ? Why should we love Him? Why should we obey Him? Why, why, why? Because He has been exalted. He has been honored. He gave His life for us, and we now can, can give our lives for Him and bring Him honor and glory. It's a, it's a step of obedience. It's a step of, of honor, though, just like when my children want to do things that I've taught them. It, it brings pleasure to me. Well, as I follow in the steps of Jesus, it brings pleasure to God the Father. And we should absolutely want to do that. Paul's writing to the church, though, let me remind you this, about how it is to keep division from happening. He's writing about how to have a unified body of believers. And you do that by all of us being humble, all of us putting others first. And when we do that, God will exalt this body of believers. I mean, that's, that's the story in a nutshell. But let's look and see how Christ has been exalted, beginning in verse 9. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every other name. He says God has highly exalted him. The word literally means super exalted him. That Christ has been exalted above any other name, any, any other possible name. He has been lifted up. God the Father has placed Him on the pedestal higher than anyone can ever, ever be. Why did He do that? Because Jesus obeyed. And He humbled Himself. And He did for mankind what we can't do for ourselves. He did the Father's plan. And in obedience to God the Father, Jesus emptied Himself, died on the cross. And now God has honored Him with a name that's above any other Day. Now think about this humbling again. I mean, just, just to remind you, what did he do? He humbled himself. He left all in glory. He walked on this earth as a, as a simple man, a carpenter. And then we know nothing about the first 30 years. He was, he was just a, a young man growing up. He obeyed his parents. He did all he was supposed to do. And then he obeyed the Father all the way to the cross. He humbled himself. But I, let me remind you, even on the cross... He said, my God, my God, you know, why hast thou forsaken me? Why, why have you turned your back on me? But 
Even though that's happened, God, I'm still willing. Still willing, willing to stay on the cross. Still willing to die. He did die. He was buried in a grave. And on the third day, He arose. And that was the beginning of the exaltation of Jesus Christ. The Bible says for some 40 days He walked on this earth and men saw Him. He talked with them and, and, and He was witnessed by over 500. Alive, risen from the dead. And then the book of Acts tells us that, that after the ministry was finished, He ascended and now sits at the Father's right hand side. The exalted position. God the Father has exalted Christ to the throne of grace. And we, we now worship Him because He's worthy. He paid the price. But there's more. This, this past, I'm calling this His past exaltation. Now, this is what God did for Him at that point in time. But there's a little more. Continue on in verse 9. He says, He's highly exalted Him and He's given Him the name which is above every name. He's given him this name. Now, my first thought, your first thought is, well, he's given him the name Jesus. But listen, Jesus is not a highly exalted name, quite frankly. There was a lot of little boys named Jesus. It's Joshua. The same name as the Hebrew Joshua. There's a lot of little boys running around whose name would have been Jesus. There's nothing special about that particular name in so much. So if you just keep reading now, keep reading what, what the rest of Scripture says. He's given him a name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, the knees shall bow in heaven, those on earth, those on the earth, that every tongue should confess. Now here it is, that Jesus Christ is Lord. There's the name that Jesus has been given. He's been given the name Lord. That word is the Greek kurios. And it's the exact same word as the Hebrew Yahweh. It's, it translates. It's the same, the same identity, the same, same God as the Hebrew Yahweh. Well, why does that matter? Well, I'm going to invite you, if you will, turn to Isaiah, the, the Old Testament, Isaiah 45. I want to show you some scripture in Isaiah 45 that, that uh, is pretty neat. It, it's, it's, it's God's uh, prophecy, if you will. Uh, but it also is, it is God's confirmation to us that Jesus Christ is Lord, but not only Lord, He is God. Part of this triangle. All right, we're in, in uh, Isaiah chapter 45. I'll get there. Look at verse 5. We're going to read three or four different verses here. Verse 5. He says, I am the Lord, and there is none of There is no God beside me. Verse 6. That they may know from the rising of the sun to its setting that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form the light, I create darkness, I make peace and create calamity. I, the Lord, do all these things. Now look over at verse 18. Still in chapter 45. For thus says the Lord who created the heavens, who is God, who formed the earth and made it, who has established it, who did create it, did not create it in vain, who formed it, inhabit it. I am the Lord, and there is no other. The word that he uses there, Lord, is this same word, Yahweh, the Greek translated kurios. It's the exact same word, the exact same name that, that God the Father has now given Jesus Christ. He's been exalted to a name above any other name. And it's not just this name, Jesus. It's the name Lord. He is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And we worship Him because of that. We worship Him because the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings humbled Himself and walked on this earth, died on the cross. And now, He has been exalted. He has been given a name like no other name. If you're still in Isaiah, look a couple of chapters back in 42. I want to show you one more verse. Uh, Isaiah chapter 42 and verse 8. Hear what God the Father says through, uh, through Isaiah the prophet. But hear what He says. Verse 8, I am the Lord, and that is my name. My glory I will not give to another. My praise to a part in me. He says, that's my name. I am the Lord, and I will give my glory to nobody else. And now all of a sudden in the book of Philippians, we find the Father through the Apostle Paul writing and saying, Jesus Christ is the Lord. Now God can't lie. 
And he's already said back in the Old Testament, I will not give my glory to anybody else. And now he says, Jesus Christ is the Lord. Same God. Same Lord. The same God of the Hebrew Yahweh is the same Lord. Jesus Christ is the Trinity, part of the Trinity. Can I explain it to you? No. I can't. If my mind could grasp it, he wouldn't be God. But listen, God told us years ahead through prophet Isaiah that there would be coming one and, and he would be uh, the, the Messiah, the anointed one, the, the Savior of the world and his name is Jesus Christ the Lord. He is Lord of all. Listen, as we study through, through the book of Philippians, God has given us this, this wonderful example that, uh, of Jesus. God himself emptying himself for the good of other men, for the good of others. And he says, church, if you're to be a church that is exalted, that's lifted up, that I can use, then you have to learn how to live humble lives. You have to learn how to put other people first. And we do that by following the example of Christ. We do that by allowing the Spirit of God to live in us and through us. Can't do it on my own. I'll never do it on my own. My own nature, I am sinful through and through. And yet God the Father can fill me with His Holy Spirit. And through that Spirit, I can begin to live like Jesus. Now, when I live as Jesus, I'm bringing Him honor and glory right there. Others see me, and they see my example. They see me humbling myself when I don't have to, perhaps. And it's a reflection of who Christ is. And when our church does the same thing, when we are a body of believers filled with those who humbly serve one another, people notice, people see, and God the Father gets the glory. Now let's move on. That's what I, I'm calling His past exaltation because God did that in the past. There's coming a future exaltation as well, and we find that in the next few verses in verse 10. He says that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, those in heaven, those on earth, those under the earth, and that every tongue shall confess. There's coming a day. There's coming a day. We call it judgment day. We call it a day when, when, when God the Father will claim all people, gather everyone, and every man, woman, boy, child, whatever you want to call it, whoever you may be, will stand before Jesus Christ the judge. And Paul says, God says to the Apostle Paul, every tongue and every knee shall bow to him. Now he tells us two or three things here. And he says, listen, that at the name of Jesus, what is, remember when, when did Jesus, when did he get the name of Jesus? When he was born. That's what they said. We're going to name him Jesus. God is with us. The incarnation, God himself came and, 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 and dwelt mankind and lived among men. There was an older gentleman at the temple when they came to uh, 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 baptize Jesus. I guess sell a, a committee, whatever. To dedicate him. I'll get it out. His name was Simeon. And when Simeon saw the Christ child, he said, he cried a prayer. He said, God, I thank you that you have allowed me to see your salvation. Jesus saves. And, and every knee, every tongue is going to confess that Jesus is the Savior of the world. Amen. He may not be your Savior, but He is the Savior of the world. Notice what else He says. Every knee shall bow, those in heaven, those on earth. Listen. Every man, woman, boy, and girl shall confess, those on the earth, Jesus is Lord. Every angel, every angelic being in heaven shall announce and shall proclaim and shall bow and say, Jesus Christ is Lord. All those under the earth, every person in hell, every demon, everyone under the earth, he said, shall proclaim Jesus Christ is Lord. You may not do it today. You may not be willing to admit Christ is Lord today. But the Bible, which cannot lie, God who cannot lie, says there will be a day when everyone, you included, me included, will declare Jesus is the Savior. World. And he goes on, he says, every knee shall bow, every tongue, and those in heaven and earth, every tongue shall confess. <clears throat> every tongue, every word, every, everything, every mouth is going to verbally say, Jesus Christ is Lord. Now, now, what does that matter? 
Well, look with me in 1 John. Go to it towards the end of your Bible. 1 John. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you had been here with us on Wednesday nights, you would remember some of the scriptures we're about to read. 1 John chapter 4. To begin with. But I tell you what, go to 1 John chapter 2. That'll be easier. We'll go, uh, we'll, we'll go chronologically. Mm -hmm. Verse 22, 1 John 2, 22. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is of the Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. John says, listen, there are those here today, those who live today, who deny Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah. Paul tells me that there's going to come a day, though, when every tongue shall confess Jesus is the Christ. Now look over, <clears throat> excuse me, in chapter 4, verse 1, beloved, <clears throat> do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God. Because there are many false prophets that have gone into the world, and by this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, they are of God. You see, John agrees with Paul. That, that Jesus is the Christ. The word Christ means the anointed one, the Messiah. The long-awaited prophecy of God that one day the Savior would come. And this Savior is Jesus Christ. So Jesus humbled himself. He left everything to be obedient, obedient to God the Father. And in return, God has blessed him. And God has given him a name above all other names. And that is the Lord. And at the name of Jesus, Jesus the Lord, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ, Jesus the Christ, Jesus the long awaited Messiah, is the Lord of all. Hear what the scriptures say. Here's what 1 Corinthians says, chapter 15. Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. He was buried, he was raised on the third day according to the scripture. Listen, God, God proclaimed it long before it happened that Jesus Christ would come and He would be Lord of all. Let's look at a couple more passages of Scripture. Look, turn to Romans. It'll, it'll be back to your left a little bit. Look at Romans or just let me read it, whichever you like. Romans 14. I'll read it real quick for you. Romans 14.10 says this. But why do you judge your brother? Why do you show contempt for your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ, as it is written. As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, every tongue shall confess to God. Quoting Isaiah 45. Paul says again, every knee shall stand. We're all going to stand before God. Now look at the very last book of the Bible, Revelation. Revelation chapter 5. Let me read what Revelation 5, verses 11 and 12 says. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creature, the elders, the number of them with ten thousand, ten thousands, and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. The Lamb who was slain is the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and there is coming a day when He will receive honor and glory and blessing and every knee, every tongue shall bow in His presence, claiming Him to be the Lord. That's His future exaltation. God in the past has already exalted Him, given Him a name above all names. One day in the future, every knee will bow. Friend, you've got a choice. You can bow before Him today as your choice. Or one day you will be forced. There will be no, there will be no fighting, no arguing. God Himself will be in your presence. You'll have no, you will have no option but to bow and confess in His Lord. You've never been in the presence of God like that. We've never experienced that. You, you say, well, no, not me. I won't do it. You have no choice. You absolutely have no choice. You will confess Him as Lord and then be judged by how <coughs> of what you did with this one who is Lord. And if you rejected Him on this earth, Dear friend, He will absolutely reject you on the judgment day. There, why in the world would anybody want to spend eternity with God if you didn't want to spend your life with Him here? That doesn't make sense. If you rejected Him now, why would you want to spend the rest of eternity with Him? And that's God's way of thinking as well. 
you, you didn't want me then, and you don't get to live with me. But you will, and I will, bow in his presence and confess him as Lord. And that's part of the exhortation of God. Listen, when we learn from the example of Christ, we, we, we put others first, we humble ourselves, and we let God take care of the results. He, he lifts us up. He blesses in so many, many ways. But now that's the, that's the past and that's the future. What about the present? Is there any exaltation for the Lord Jesus today? Well, in the book of Romans chapter 12, Paul says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, which is your reasonable act of worship. Your reasonable act of service. That, that we are called to worship this one who died for us. This one who loves us, who gave himself for us. We are called to, to humble ourselves and, and love Him and praise Him and worship Him. We're called to do that today. And God is teaching me, teaching us, that if we would but obey and, and do as He says, humble ourselves and honor Him, He will in turn honor us. I'm not saying He gives you riches. I'm not saying He's going to uh, give you wonderful health. But He will use you to bring Himself honor and glory. Look at the very end of verse 11. That every tongue should confess Jesus Christ is Lord for what? To the glory of God the Father. You see, that's the whole purpose, is that God the Father gets all of the glory. I want to read a couple more verses for you, and then we're going to be through for today. Uh, James, the book of James, uh, he tells us just a little, about, a, bit, a little bit about humbling ourselves and God exalting us. In James chapter 4, uh, verse, verse 6 is what I've got written down. Let me see if that's correct. Verse 6, he says, But he gives more grace, therefore he says, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble, that we are called to be humble servants of Almighty God. And uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, Peter echoes that, just almost the same thing. Uh, 1 Peter, let me see if I can find it again. Uh, Five, five, I believe what I've got them down here. He says, Likewise, you younger, submit yourselves to the elders. Yes, all of you should be submissive to one another, be clothed with humility, for God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. You see, Christ has given us an example. He's given us the, the living example of what God would have us to do with me. That we're to humble ourselves. We're to empty ourselves of all of our rights and live for others. And as we do that, God himself will lift us up. He will exalt us. He's going to exalt us so that his name is honored. It doesn't mean I'm going to get rich. It doesn't mean I'll never be sick. But it means that God in his own way, in his own wisdom, he will exalt me so that other people will be pointed to him. He will exalt this church. So that other people will come to know Jesus Christ as Lord. And God is the Lord. So why in the world should I, should I follow his example? Well, number one, he's my Lord and Savior. He's the one that died for me. I want to honor him. Number two, I will honor him one day. It may not be my own choice, but I will bow the knee. And I will confess with my, my mouth that Christ is Lord. As I bow before him on judgment day. So why not honor him now? Versus then. Why not stand before him today and, and bring honor and glory through my obedience to him? Other people will come to know Christ through that. And there was little, she wanted to be like Mike. She had seen it on TV, you know, and, and, and Michael Jordan was popular, and, and she was like three or four years old. She I, I want to be like that. It's a little sweet little voice. And he gets you to sing it. She was, she was playing the part. She wanted to be like that. And, you know, that's an honor that, that somebody would want to grow up and be like you. But we have this perfect example of what God would have his children to be. And it's Jesus. And what did Jesus do? He totally emptied himself of all divine attributes. Still was God. And yet he lived as a man. Why? 
because that's the only way he could pay the price for us. That's the only way that man's sins could be forgiven. There was no other way. Jesus Christ took my place. He took your place. He sacrificed for the good of others. And that's what God calls us to do. To give so that others can know Him. And if we will do that, the example is, God will lift us up. God will exalt us in some way. Now, we don't do it for the exaltation. Because the whole purpose of being exalted is, the very last phrase, to the glory of God the Father. So that the Father is, is, is exalted. I want to be like Jesus. I want to bring Him honor and glory. So my commitment is this. Others first. <laughs> with the help of God. Others first. That I can be like Jesus. That my church can reach out to those who are around us. And that they might see something different in me. And that difference is Jesus. Is he worthy of my worship? Is he worthy of my honor? Is he worthy of, of my bowing before him? Absolutely. He has been given the name above all other names. Jesus Christ, Lord, Lord of all. So my challenge to you this morning is make a commitment with me to live for him, to exalt him. And friend, that begins by giving your heart and life to him. You've never been born again. If you've never been saved, then you will bow before Him. But it will be on judgment day as He's judging you, casting you into the lake of fire for eternity. Or you can choose to accept His love today, His, His gift of grace, where your sins are forgiven, cast as far as the east is from the west, and God will remember them no more. You can receive Christ as Lord today, curious, this Lord of all, and your sins are washed away. And you too can be a child of God. You can make that commitment today. I'm going to ask you to stand up.